In this video, we will learn how to implement all the constraints like propagation delay, length of track, target impedance etc. to your design files from Topology Explorer 17.4. For that, we are going to use Security Aurora 17.4 license and you can download the demo file from the link given in the description. So let's get started. In the very first step, we will run Security Aurora 17.4 and select Security Aurora 2 or Security Aurora license and click on OK. Next, we are going to open the board file. You can download it from the link given in the description. To open a board file, go to File, Open. Just locate where you have saved it and select the file and click on Open button. To demonstrate constraints floor planning, I am going to extract parallel data bus 0 using following steps. First, we will go to Setup, then click on Constraints. Go to electrical constraint. Once electrical constraint is open in constraint manager, we are going to change the options from tools and click on options button. And here make sure you have unchecked extract for simulation and include router data connects. If you recall from previous series of videos, we have checked these boxes because we were going to simulate the topology. In this case, we are extracting it so we can define electrical constraint sets. And then click on OK. Now to extract the topology, we'll go to electrical, click over net. From here, go to wiring. We are going to extract parallel data bus 0. Then right click here and click over topology explorer. And as you can see, we have extracted the topology from our board file. Now I'm going to adjust the component to represent correct flow of current or signal propagation. In the next step, we are going to add constraint for impedance, propagation delay and relative propagation delays. To do that, we have to choose set topology constraint from workflow. If you couldn't able to see workflow manager, you can go to view and click on workflow from here. Once we click over set topology constraint, we'll see all the constraint and their properties. First, we'll click over plus icon next to impedance. And here we have to add the impedance for each component spin. In our case, the impedance profile is common for all the drivers and receivers. So we'll click over this button and click on create. After creating the impedance profile, we have to enter target impedance and tolerance. In our case, it is 50 ohm and 10%. After adding the values, click on OK. To verify it, if you'll click over this arrow button and you can see we have added the impedance profile successfully. In the next step, we are going to add two sets of propagation delay rules which represent maximum length constraint on data bytes. For that, click on plus icon next to propagation delay. First, we are going to add propagation delay rule for U7 and XU2. So we have to select those together using control key on your keyboard. Then click on create button. Now here we have to set minimum and maximum delay values in mills. I'm just going to enter it. Similarly, we are going to create another rule for XU2 and RN32. So we have to select these two and click on create. In this case, the value is minimum 200 mil and maximum 500 mil. After adding these minimum and maximum delays, click on OK button. To verify it, again click on this arrow. And here we have successfully added propagation delay constraints. After adding the design constraint for propagation delay and impedance, we are going to add relative propagation delay constraints. This constraint is nothing but length matching design rule between data and data strobe buses. To create a relative propagation delay constraint, first click on plus icon next to relative propagation delay. And here we have to select FPGA controller and DIM module connector, which is U7 and XU2 and click on create button. Once it is created, make sure the delta should be zero nanoseconds and in our case, I'm just going to put tolerance for 100 mil. After adding the tolerance, I'm just going to change its name to byte lane because later we are going to assign this constraint to different lanes of data buses. And click on OK. After that, let's expand wiring tab and select template from schedule and select yes from verify schedule. So the purpose of adding this into a template is when we will apply this template back to electrical constraint set, 
all these constraints we have created for impedance, propagation delay and relative propagation delay will be implemented. After adding all the constraint on propagation delay, relative propagation delay and impedances, we are going to save this topology. To do that, you have to click on save as ECCH file and I am going to name it data underscore strobe and click on save button. Once we have successfully saved the topology, we are going to update constraint manager. To do that, click on update constraint manager link from the workflow. Now to verify we have successfully updated electrical constraint set, go to wiring worksheet from routing workbook and here under reference electrical constraint set, we'll find parallel data zero that we have created. Once we'll select it, the template will apply here. Now in this particular case, which is a statics to FPGA controller, we are going to use same electrical constraint for all the data buses. But let's consider a specific case where we have different constraints for different byte groups. So that's why I'm going to teach you how to create different net groups of data and data strobes. Firstly, let's remove this. Now create a first byte group. We have to select all the data buses from data zero to data seven. So you have to just hold your left mouse key and just drag it to select all the data buses. After selecting the data buses, next we are going to select data strobe zero or DQS zero. To do that, you have to just scroll down and from here you have to select parallel data bus strobe zero. To select data strobe together with data bus, you have to just hold the control key first and then click here. So now you can see we have selected eight bits of data and one data strobe. After that, you have to just right click, go to create and create net group. Here I'm going to name it lane zero and click on OK. Let's clear this filter. Now if you scroll up, you can see lane zero net group is created, which has eight data bits and one data strobe. Similarly, I'm going to create other byte groups. Here we go. So till here we have created all the eight lanes. Now we are going to apply electrical constraint sets to data buses and data strobe. So here we have two options. Either we can apply to each lanes, but as I told you in our case, we have common electrical constraint for all the byte groups. So we are going to apply it together on data buses and data strobe. So here we'll just select data bus data zero electrical constraint set and similarly for data strobe. So it will be automatically implemented in the byte groups as you can see here. Now we can simply verify all the constraint sets are successfully implemented or not. To do it, you have to just change tab to impedance. And here you can see we have implemented 50 ohm target impedance with 10% tolerance to all the byte groups. Similarly, you can check for minimum and maximum delays. And here we are getting errors because we haven't routed any connections between the components. So as you can see in the board file. All right. So if we'll place these components close to each other, then Manhattan length will reduce and we'll see green markers instead of red in constraint manager. Now after verifying we have successfully implemented all the electrical constraint sets, we are going to audit electrical constraints. To do that, go to audit menu and from here select electrical constraint sets. Now it will generate an audit report. We are going to save it inside the same folder and click on save. Here we go. So here we'll get the summary of audit report and here we can clearly see the number of topology we have implemented all the constraints are 72 where we have no errors and warnings. So in your case, if you are getting any errors and warning, I would suggest look for those errors. Try to resolve those first before moving further. Let's close it. Let's close constraint manager as well. Now I'm just going to save the board file. So this was part one of constraint driven floor planning. In the part two, we'll implement those electrical constraints on board file and try to resolve all the DRC errors. For more tutorials, visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel.